Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Apologize for the lateness. I misread the time. Khair, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Once again, okay. Ooh, sitting on Shams hijab clothes. Okay. The salah, salah clothes. Jazakumullah uh, khairun for tuning in. Uh, the winner for yesterday's trivia is nobody, unfortunately. I think everyone misunderstood my question, unless I mister misunderstood the answers. Uh, the first question that I asked was, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal that he mentions in the 27th juz, other than <coughs> the holy books? So the answer was, وَأَنزَلْنَا hadid Allah revealed uh, uh, copper, right? Allah revealed uh, is it copper? Hadid? Subhanallah. Fihi ba'sun shadid wa manafi'u nas. There is much harm in it, but benefit for man mankind as well. So of course nowadays you see people using copper or metal. I believe it's metal for weapons and whatnot. And people use it for beneficial elements as well. So this was the answer. Nobody got it, unfortunately. Unless I misread. If I did misread, please text me and correct me. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay, so today's reflection is from the 28th juz of the Holy Quran. The 28th juz is once again very unique surrounding uh, aspects of adab, akhlaq, the Muslim character, how we should be with one another, how should a husband treat his wife, and vice versa. And this is what it starts with, right? Surah Al Mujadila, right? Some people, or Mujadala. Surah Al-Mujadala, which talks about the Mujadila, right? Al-Mujadala means a debate, an argument. Uh, this is talking about one of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, the female companions who came to the Prophet wasallam and complained with regards to the treatment of her husband. After she became a little bit old, her husband said, Anti alayya kazahri ummi, right? You are to me like the back of my mother, meaning you are haram upon me. I don't need you anymore. And subhanAllah, this was uh, another way of sort of divorcing in Jahiliyyah. When a, a man did not want his wife anymore, he would equate her to what? The back of his mother. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard this complaint of this woman who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The narration makes mention, Aisha radiallahu anha says, a woman came in complaining to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I did not know what she was speaking about to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Allah, the Almighty, heard her message and He revealed this entire surah, right? Supporting the complaint, supporting the plead of this woman who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, telling men in turn who do this, you know, equate the backs of their wives because they've become old or the men have lost interest in their wives now, telling them not to do that, right? It is grave in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentions, uh, you know, Allah answers this uh, matter very logically. He says, "In How can you equate the backs or, or your wives to the backs of your mothers? Your mothers are the ones who gave you birth. Your wives are the ones who you happily married, you know, for the sake of living a beautiful life with portions of intimacy, compassion, and other good bits. Why are you now equating your wives with your mothers? Just because you don't want them anymore. If you don't want them anymore, subhanAllah, you know, as I say, if you have troubles in your marriage, get counseling. Sometimes through counseling, you can evade the negativities that are being born in marriage and you can as well approach other matters which will inshallah bless you and your families subhanallah allah mentions a beautiful ayah which i was reflecting upon in surah al-hashr right which we recite from time to time in salah but we just sort of skim over without glancing allah says with regards to the quran how powerful is this book لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله 
وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون If we were to review the Quran upon whom? Upon the mountains. Subhanallah, I just did a cross-country drive before the month of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar, the mountains that I saw. Even the mountains would turn uh, um, into dust out of the khashiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khashi'am mutasaddi'ah. They would break into pieces out of concentration and devotion to Allah. I was just thinking about it. Imagine all these big mountains. In the Arab region, say in the Madani region, you see the mountain of Uhud from your hotel surrounding Medina. In Canada, you see the beautiful mountains of BC. You go to Arizona, you see the, the dry mountains there. That creation of Allah compared to your heart is very tiny, very massive. Your heart is tiny. Now imagine if Allah says that through pondering upon the Qur'an, if the Qur'an was revealed around mountains, they too would have become, become devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and softness would have attracted them. What can this Qur'an then do to your heart? And hence, look at how Allah ends the, the verse. Right? He says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالِ Allah is mentioning these examples so you can focus upon your creation and then creations like the mountain and then get a sense of how the Qur'an can impact you. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Right? Once again, leading the Qur'an to your rationale. Use your mind and understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an. And hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes Surah Al-Hashr by describing who Allah is. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to mention uh, Surah Al-Mumtahina. This is a traversy that many of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum faced, uh, especially uh, right before the period of Fatu Mecca, where cer certain Muslim women or certain non-Muslim women were coming to Medina and accepting Islam, and they were wedded before to the Mushrikeen, right, of Mecca. Now there was a confusion. Can we now be intimate with these women who are coming and accepting Islam? Can we marry them? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala expla explains, you know, all these concepts in Surah Al Mumtahina. Allah mentioned some beautiful messages, messages in Surah Al-Saf as well. Explaining the trials that previous Anbiya went through, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, his complaints to his nation, showing us that complacency or complaining will be the norm among individuals who the good message reaches to. Should that stop you from now uh, abstaining from, uh, you know, f abstaining from mentioning the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ You know, certain people surrounding you, may it be the negative media, may it be negative people in your life, may it be the bigots, they wish to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete his light, the light of Islam, the light of the good conduct of the Prophet sallallahu even if bigots, even if rebellious people, even if disbelieving rebels wish to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How should you then understand the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a personal level? How should you? What, you sh what should you be doing? So the good conduct that you gained from Islam, the good con conduct that you gained from uh, the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the good conduct that you gain from reciting the Qur'an, you continue on with it. Don't let your good conduct morph into something neg negative because of negativities around you. Rather, be perpetual, be steadfast, and continue on with the good that you learned from the deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through you will complete the nur of Islam. How? Nur of Islam being complete does not necessarily mean that everyone around the world will become Muslims. Rather, it can mean people will understand sooner or later the realities of Islam. Rather than the very dogmatic, big, you know, the dogmatic uh, narrative that people are accustomed to understanding. Wallahu <clears throat> alam. Thereafter, Allah mentions the importance of uh, engaging with our weekly obligation of Salatul Jumu'ah. Right? Allah says when the call of Jumu'ah is called, 
then answer to that call. And hence, it should be uh, upon every Muslim to try and at least go to the masjid for the Jumu'ah prayer on a normal circumstance, right? Under a normal circumstance. Right now, the masajid are closed, but I'm speaking under normal circumstances. Uh, Allah then goes on to speaking about the munafiqun in Surah Al-Munafiqun. Among their qualities is, once again, plotting and mocking the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mocking those who wish to genuinely believe in a very secretive manner, right? They secretly say to one another, هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ لَا تُنْفِقُوا عَلَى مَنْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْفَضُّوا وَلِلَّهِ خَزَائِنُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ This goes back to charity. They say to one another, don't spend upon these people following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and <clears throat> don't facilitate for them. Allah says, you know what? If wealth was only in your hands, then you could have said something like this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the treasures of the heavens and the earth. But unfortunately, those who are hypocrites, they have a veil in front of their minds and in front of their eyes. Hence, they can't understand the reality of the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which He bestows upon the genuine believers. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives us a very relevant message in Surah Al-Munafiqun. He says, don't let appearances deceive you. Don't let appearances deceive you. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامَهُمْ Sorry, تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ When you look at certain hypocrites, talking about Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, O Prophet of Allah, their bodies, their muscle, their mass, they mind-boggle you. They make you surprised. وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ And when they speak, you have to be forced, you're at times forced to pay an attentive ear to them because of how eloquent they are, right? But at the end of the day, body, mass, speech, eloquence, you know, you flowing in speech, that is irrelevant when it comes to your sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not sincere, then no matter how strong, beautiful, handsome, eloquent you are, all that is a waste. Why? Because when such people were told by the Sahaba radiallahu right? Or by the believers in their time, Ta'ala, come. يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Despite your eloquence, despite your beauty, you need, uh, you need, uh, subhanAllah, Shaykh Sa'ad would have said something very funny right now. I'm not going to mention it. Uh, <laughs> um, so despite your eloquence, despite your beauty, you need the forgiveness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So come, gain that forgiveness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and and be saved in the hereafter. What would they do? They would shake their heads, right? And hence we, subhanAllah, a, a good message for us sometimes uh, when, when we're having a good day, when we're dressing very well, on the day of Eid, mashallah, a lot of us will engage in beautifying ourselves. May it be the sisters with their makeup, or the brothers with their nice tuxedos, or their, um, you know, for our Patan brothers, our Pakhtun brothers, the shalwar kameez, or for the Arab brothers, their nice thobe, and, their, and then their ghutra. Don't let your deceptions, you don't let your uh, physical appearance deceive you from the reality what you're uh, the reality of what you're trying to gain, which is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and uh, trying your best to be the, a good Samaritan and a good Muslim at the end of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, many lessons, subhanAllah, but we've ran out of time. Okay, let us proceed towards our trivia, but before that, take these last few moments of the month of Ramadan seriously, make the best of them and reap from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before this month ends. So, the, you know, Laylatul Eid and Yawmul Eid, the night of Eid and the day of Eid, uh, you will be among those who truly deserve this celebration because of you making the most out of these remaining moments. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like always, to make these last moments uh, of the month of Ramadan a great blessing for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them 
such an energizer battery for our faith that we need to know we not we know, we need not to recharge our batteries of faith ever again inshallah let us make this such a stepping stone which will make keep us flying in the air right okay i'm just losing it now jazakumullah khairan okay so today's trivia is um who does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about towards the end of Surah Al-Tahrim and mention the contrast between the two people, okay? Which two people do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about towards the end of Surah Al-Tahrim and explain the contrast in between them, the difference in between them, okay? Uh, what is the bold message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, in Surah Al-Tahrim? to certain companions. Let me just put it that way. And what is our, what is Allah's advice towards us as believers uh, in Surah Al-Tahrim? Mention at least one of them. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, apologies for the flippy, flippy, floppy message towards the end. But inshallah, you got it. Uh, be inspired towards the Quran. You understood the message. Be inspired towards the, with, with the Quran. Uh, reflect, once again, reflect, recite, and practice. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.